my goal is to use photographs to change the way that people perceive the natural world. That's why I proposed a story about parasites to National Geographic magazine. Parasites are one of the most reviled groups of organisms on our planet, but some of them have such amazing and bizarre life cycles, they force us to rethink the role that parasites play in our world. For example, this is a ladybug standing over the cocoon of a parasitic wasp. The adult wasp stings the ladybug and injects a single egg. That egg hatches, and the larva feeds on the insides of that ladybug, carefully avoiding its internal organs to keep it alive. It then chews its way through the abdomen and spins a cocoon in between the ladybug's legs. Now, that cocoon is a very vulnerable stage for that wasp, so it forces the ladybug to stand guard over it to protect it from predators as it develops into an adult. In this scenario, a different species of wasp has attacked this caterpillar. And I have a video to show you how this interaction works. Here's the adult wasp stinging a baby caterpillar that has just emerged. It's injecting her eggs into it. Now, those caterpillars live a normal life for the next week. They feed, they grow, until those larval wasps are ready to emerge, at which point they cut their way through the skin of that caterpillar and emerge by the dozens. And what they're actually doing as they're emerging is they're spinning their cocoons as they come out. And the amazing thing about this process is the caterpillar actually survives. And it wakes up, it crawls on top of that pile of wasp cocoons, and it spins an additional layer of protective silk. Then it takes its post as a bodyguard. It'll actually rear up its head anytime it's disturbed. And the whole purpose of this manipulation is to prevent this from happening, which is a hyperparasitoid wasp injecting its egg into the parasitic wasp that just came out of the caterpillar. So it's an additional layer of parasitism, an additional layer of complexity. This is an ant in the Brazilian Amazon that's been infected by Ophiocordyceps fungus. And this fungus gets into the ant and it forces it to climb off the forest floor and then it forces it to fix itself to the end of a leaf. It then kills the ant, consumes its body, and sends these reproductive stalks out to rain spores on the forest floor below. Here's a video of that process where the ant is in its last hours of life, the fungus has forced it to bite down on the edge of this leaf, and then it kills it there. In the first night after it dies, the fungus bursts out of the joints of the ant, and then over the course of the next week, it sends a reproductive stalk out of the back of its head. This is a frog that's been attacked by a parasitic flatworm called a trematode. This worm forces the frog to grow extra legs, which makes it more vulnerable to predators like herons. And that's because the worm wants to get into the gut of the heron because that is the ideal environment for it to reproduce. This is my personal favorite. It's a sheep crab infected by a parasitic barnacle. The barnacle enters the crab, and if the crab is male, it gives it a sex change. It turns it into a female, so it grows female parts, including an egg chamber that the parasite uses to lay its own eggs. Then it activates a maternal care instinct so the feminized crab cares for the parasite's eggs as if they were its own. So what you see in this image is thousands of tiny parasitic barnacle larvae that have just hatched and are emerging to infect more crabs. This cricket has been infected by a horsehair worm. The worm grows up inside the cricket, and then when it's ready to emerge, it forces the cricket to find water and drown itself because the worm needs to emerge in an aquatic environment to survive as an adult. Now, we've known about these parasitic relationships for decades, but we know very little about the mechanisms of this behavior modification, this mind control. But because these parasites have such precise control over the behavior of their hosts, they're giving us an opportunity to understand 
more about how the brains of these host organisms are actually controlling their behavior. And in turn, they offer us lessons about how our own biology controls our behavior. Now, you may look at this image and think, okay, that doesn't look real. That doesn't look like it was photographed in nature. Well, I intentionally developed this film noir-inspired aesthetic in order to get past people's visceral reaction to parasites. I picked examples where the parasite and host could be seen in a single image, and then I used carefully controlled lighting to show you exactly where one creature ends and the other starts. And I've got an example for how this photographic process looks. In the case of the cricket, I actually had the researcher ship me several hundred infected crickets, and I kept them in my kitchen in Berkeley, California, because that's the warmest part of the house. And every day, I would check to see if the worms were ready to emerge. And you can actually see their coiled bodies in the belly of the cricket. Then I'd set up my lights. And I actually pioneered a new approach using fiber optic cables and focusing, light, focusing lenses for this story. Then I used a specific combination of salts that mimic the internal chemistry of the cricket. And then I sedated the crickets by putting them in the refrigerator. So when I placed this sedated cricket in the pool of cricket saline, the worm would calmly emerge, thinking it's still inside the cricket. And that would give me enough time to compose my image. So that picture took me about 21 days to figure out. I would start with one idea, I'd throw it out, I'd take whatever worked with that approach, I'd, I'd try something new, and I would iterate on that process until I had a combination of lighting and, and composition that I felt gave justice to these creatures. Now at the end of my project, I, there was a night where I was staying up late, I was listening to this thumping electronic music to stay awake, and something magical kind of happened. The, the beat of the music and the images scrolling on the screen synchronized by themselves. And I had this idea for how to illustrate the iterative process by which I landed at the final image. So here is the zombie parasite dubstep music video I created to illustrate my creative process.